Hello and welcome to the video. My name's Alex for those of you who are new here and today I just wanted to do a little chit chat about things that I will do differently second time around with a new baby. So I am at the time of filming this it's the end of May and I am 37 weeks pregnant and yeah I just thought it would be interesting to sort of reflect back on last um pregnancy birth and you know newborn phase and just to have a little think about what i would yeah what i would do differently so i guess i'll start with actually actual pregnancy and delivery um i like if this is something you can't really plan very well so there's no point sort of being like oh i'm gonna have a pain-free birth this time like i'm just gonna decide to make that happen but um one of the things I will be doing differently this time is to arrive at the hospital with a little list of my wishes because such as like dim lighting, would like to be able to use the bath, um, minimal medical intervention where possible. Um, the reason I want, I'm going to arrive with that is because the last time that I arrived at the hospital, I was already well into labor i was nine centimeters dilated and i was just the contractions were too close together and too intense at that stage for me to be able to even remember any of those things that i'd intended to do like use the water or have the lights dim so i just feel like arriving with that already written down will be a cue for both my husband and the midwives to help me with those things the next thing that i'm really going to try to do differently is to be more relaxed about the fourth trimester and sleeping at the beginning so um i've touched on this in a different video but i sort of always just assumed that babies innately knew how to nap and that it was simple I didn't realize you kind of had to that there was a learning curve and that you kind of had to teach them how to nap so um, I'm going to be much more relaxed in the first few months with just holding him um, keeping him in a wrap or carrier and just not worrying about if sleep isn't going how we would like it to go in the first few months because it does happen eventually and they need that closeness snuggle time at the beginning um, when they're freshies and the sleep thing does happen eventually if you um, if you can teach them how to do it so I'm just gonna feel more relaxed knowing that that tricky phase at the beginning doesn't last forever the second thing that I am doing differently this time is to be more organized before the baby arrives so with jed we did have his nursery set up and stuff but i didn't have things like like we didn't have his change station system set up or we didn't um we didn't have like the breast pump even out of the box but it was stuff that we didn't know so i just like i didn't imagine that i'd be using a breast pump until like months down the track but i needed it straight away so what i've done this time is to just get everything set up early so that um you know we don't have to be worrying about any of that stuff at the beginning everything is already in place being a bit more organized with with the stuff is is what i've done differently this time Something else I'm going to do different this time is to use a wool nappy cover for the beginning of, uh, sorry, at the beginning. So I've talked about this in different videos, but a wool nappy cover is, um, it's down there. I can't reach it, but it's a, it's a cover that goes over the top of the nappy and it like wicks, ama wicks away and neutralize, neutralizes, you know, wee smells it basically means that you're not having to get up to like a baby who's leaked into their pjs and sheets um just makes for easier sleeping and rest for you and the baby so that's something we'll be using from the beginning another thing that we're going to do differently this time is to do 
less snappy changes through the middle of the night last time with jed we like so he obviously woke about three times through the night to feed in the beginning and we would change his nappy every single time we learned later that you don't need to do that unless there's a poo so i'm just going to be using the wool nappy cover and providing that he's not getting na developing nappy rash or anything like that we won't be changing him every time through the night because it wakes up the baby and it's annoying to have to like re-swaddle them and stuff so this time i'm just going to try getting up the baby and feeding him and then putting him back down without that disruption of the um nappy change and on that subject we're also going to be using the ready-made swaddles as soon as we possibly can from the beginning um as soon as they like snugly fit on him rather than the wraps that you you know manually wrap because you know after you feed them you have to rewrap them because it becomes all loose so yeah we'll, we'll we'll use those as soon as we can another thing we'll be doing this differently this time is to use a bath thermometer from the very start we found that jed loved his naps as soon as we could get the temperature of the bath right to a comfortable temperature and um, so we'll use that from the very beginning another thing i'll be doing differently is to definitely not use the cry it out method i didn't use this method with i just had to change the memory card so while i was up i grabbed the wool nappy cover to show you and the little bath thermometer um, so as I was saying, I, I didn't use the cry out method with Jed, but one day in my desperation, I did let him cry in his bassinet alone for 20 minutes and it was the worst. He was so upset and I was so upset. It didn't help at all. So I will not be doing that. One of the other things that I'll be trying to do differently but that I think will be hopefully easier to just come more naturally is to be more patient. First time around with Jed I, I definitely felt impatient about him not being able to sleep um, and then when he got older I, I felt impatience when he would like tug at my clothes or just be you know learning to be mobile and be under my feet when I needed him not to be like when you're trying to cook dinner and stuff and there are a few times that I kind of lost my cool a little bit but I definitely can absolutely say that being Jed's mum or you know not just Jed's mum but just being a mum has taught me how to be more patient so that these days when when my buttons are being pushed when i am finding it difficult i can um deal with it i can like i can cut out the noise and i can just wait for it to dissipate i can use distraction techniques to to deal with the emotions that jed's feeling that dealing with um so there were a couple of times when he was little when it was definitely a new thing to be tested and to be dealing with like screaming stages and stuff and it's hard because you know we're not used to having to deal with deal with that and sometimes you just have a little snap and you might have a little scream or a snap but that doesn't help it doesn't it's not good for the baby it's not good for you it doesn't help anyone to feel better so this is something that doesn't happen that often these days occasionally it does happen when you've had a super stressful day when they've had a stressful day when you maybe are lacking sleep sometimes you do have a little snap and you don't feel good about it but also it's important not to try and be perfect all the time it's going to happen probably 
so you can't be too hard on yourself but I just feel I just really feel that I'm much better able to deal with those situations now I know how to handle them better without snapping so yeah that's that's a good thing another thing I'm going to be doing differently this time and this might surprise you is to actually have the baby next to me so the, I'm on the bed right now and that is baby's bassinet um, I did start out with the baby next to me with Jed next to me last time I found that I couldn't sleep properly because he grunted so loudly and I'm a really light sleeper and so Lindsay and I ended up switching sides and I would often go downstairs to get a couple of hours sleep on the lounge just because I couldn't sleep with the noise um, now I'm not saying that this time is going to be any different I mean you know likelihood it won't be but I just felt like I I kind of regretted not having him next to me um, I just felt like I missed out on that ma maternal part of having him next to me it's hard to explain but even if I do need to go to our lounge room which is right next to our room at, the, at this place because it's um, a one level even if I do need to do that Lindsay can just roll roll over and still like you know give the bassinet a little rock if if need be without us having to like fully have the bassinet situated next to Lindsay I just I know like I just feel like that is something that is really important for me to do this time because I felt like I was being a little bit not neglectful because it's not like I was not helping baby like Jed when he was waking and I was still feeding him through three times through the night I just felt like I was I don't know I just felt like I missed out on that bit which is weird because I needed to go down and get sleep to be able to deal with things the next day anyway that's something I'm going to try this time something else I'm going to do this differently this time I think is to not pump every night so with Jed I would feed him through the day and then at night at like nine o'clock at night I would feed sorry I would pump to get milk storage to have in the freezer which was there to use um, for when we needed to give him a bottle or like if we were out and I didn't want to feed in public or something like that I don't know if I'm going to do that or not now that I say it it is handy to have some milk in the freezer but I just feel like I had too much and that it was quite a lot of effort to whip out the breast pump um, every night and do that so I'm just going to be a bit more open-minded about whether or not I actually need to do that and probably the last thing that I can think of is that I'm going to be less of a stickler for our sleep routine now the fact that I was a stickler for the sleep routine has meant that we've I think wound up with a toddler who is a really really good napper still does like a th three hour nap most days so in his bassinet in his cot um so yeah um but I also think sometimes we were like in hindsight too afraid to deviate from that routine and um I now know with you know the benefit of hindsight that if you change up that routine um sometimes it, it's not going to completely undo their sleeping routine or their ability to sleep at home at all so just to be a little bit more relaxed when we are out and 
not worry so much about him being able to sleep so yes that is really all i could think of for things i'm going to do differently with baby number two i hope that you guys enjoyed this little video and um yeah i um i'm not sure how much more i'll be posting in the coming weeks before baby's arrival but um i'm sure we'll have some news for you soon enough but thank you so much for watching and please click subscribe and hit the little notification bell so that you know when i put out a new video thanks again for watching bye